About six months ago, in August of 2015, NASA has released this absolutely amazing and beautiful picture that you see on the screen right now, where a moon passed in front of Earth, and it sort of obscured it, not in the way that I'm doing here, but in a completely different, majestic way. And this picture actually captured my imagination, and I wanted to try to recreate this in Space Engine, and also talk a little bit more about how this has been achieved and why it's actually absolutely amazing. So today we're going to be doing um, a bit of Space Engine and a little bit of Universe Sandbox 2 to talk about something called Lagrange Point. And what Lagrange Point is, is essentially a point between two different massive bodies where essentially you achieve a kind of a balance of gravity so that an object can stay between them. So I'm going to explain this to you visually and try to uh, recreate this in Universe Sandbox 2. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And so the first thing we're going to do is actually let's try to recreate this in universe, uh, sorry, in Space Engine. And um, to do this, I'm actually going to try to reach a Lagrange point, um, which is approximately 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth. And I'm actually looking at a distance uh, right here. So there we go. This is about a million kilometers. And we have to be about 1.5 million kilometers away, which is about a, um, a million miles away from Earth. Now, all right, so that's uh, that's about a realistic distance of where this so-called L1 or Lagrange point one is. Now, how do we do this in uh, this particular game so that it actually looks like it does in NASA picture? Well, of course, we have to zoom in. We're going to use um, page up and page down button uh, to try to zoom in as much as we can. Let's see what we can achieve here. And uh, basically what we're going to be seeing is, of course, our planet and the moon. There it is. There is our planet and there is the moon. And uh, the moon is going to be passing in front of our planet. Now, let's try to not really move it too much. I'm also going to actually see if I can maybe uh, go back in time a little bit. We're actually going to change this a little bit more. Let's go to 11th hour here so that before the moon uh, reaches Earth. And here we go. So let's advance time. Um, we're going to accelerate this a little bit because the way it has been done is actually, this was with um, a satellite that was launched in 2015 called Deep Space Climate Observatory, also known as Triana. And Triana is actually a name of the, um, well, it was uh, named after Rodrigo de Triana, first of the Columbus's crew to actually notice or to, to sight America on their way to discovering America. And, um, uh, the mission here is essentially, it does just this, it just observes the Earth. And as it observes the Earth, it also gets to see the moon, specifically the far, the dark side of the moon. And we actually can kind of zoom in a little bit more here, just to see what it looks like. And there you go, this is the passage of the moon in front of Earth. We can maybe accelerate this a little bit more. Um, and this is ac actually what NASA was able to capture really well. Now, this particular mission is actually um, a primary warning system for different solar magnetic storms and all kinds of solar uh, wind data that NASA tries to um, receive. And basically, whenever a solar wind is coming, it, uh, this satellite notifies notifies NASA to you know be careful and to uh, use protective protective measures um, so that various equipment is not damaged. Now let's do this again, but uh, this time a little bit closer so that I, I actually want to see if I can obscure the moon a little bit more than that. Uh, we're going to actually zoom in a little bit closer to um, to the to the planet. And at the same time, we're going to be zooming out. Look at that. This is a pretty awesome effect. Uh, there we go. And so what we're going to do is let's do this again, but from a closer distance. And this time with the moon passing a little bit bigger so this is from a distance of about 560,000 kilometers or about 320,000 miles i think now so th this particular satellite was actually launched only in february of 2015 and it was actually launched on top of spacex um falcon 9 rocket so this was obviously a privately funded launch and originally this mission was proposed by al gore back in the days when he was um he actually wrote a book about climate change and he wanted to use this particular satellite to explore and to actually observe various climate changes on earth and so this satellite has quite a lot of really interesting missions and one of them of course is observing earth's uh, uh, changes in atmosphere, changes in various um, ozone layer depletions, or ch uh, basically changes in dust and uh, volcanic ash. So all of this stuff is actually uh, visible uh, from the satellite because what you can do is if you zoom in on 
Earth, you'll actually be able to see a very, very sort of a thin layer of atmosphere that can then be analyzed visually, which is, I think is a pretty uh, awesome idea for this particular satellite. And usually this satellite takes a picture about every two hours, so that's why the uh, the picture that you saw, or the video that you saw in the beginning was, uh, showed the moon moving so fast, because this was actually every two hours per frame. And uh, in this particular orbit where this satellite is located, there's actually um, four other satellites already, and the fifth one uh, is coming, or the sixth one in this case, is coming really soon as well. So there's going to be six different satellites orbiting in uh, L1 Lagrange point. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what Lagrange point looks like uh, using Universe Sandbox 2, and we're going to um, explore it in a little bit more detail because uh, here it is. I'm actually at the Lagrange point one right now, so we're going to zoom out again just so you can see how far away Earth is for comparison um, and essentially uh, this is where we are oh, there we go this is Earth right there it's barely visible and this is where we are in space in relation to our planet and also in relation to the Sun the Sun is right there approximately 149 million kilometers or about 99 uh, 99 million miles away from us and so here we are on Earth in Universe Sandbox 2, and uh, we're going to see if we can actually reach Lagrange Point L1 here, and if we can possibly recreate the same view as we had before in Space Engine, and I don't think it's actually going to be possible because we don't have a camera zoom in this game. Unfortunately, there's no camera zoom, so we won't be able to actually see the moon passing in front of Earth, even though it's sort of about to happen right now. And gone. Anyway, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Lagrange L1 point. Uh, and this is, like I mentioned before, one of the five points where essentially what you're reaching is, uh, let me just use a random object, like for example, Pluto. Uh, you reach a point between two orbits, uh, or sorry, between two massive bodies, in this case it's Sun and Earth, where the pull from both bodies becomes relatively equal and so the body just gets stuck there so instead like normally would if i were to place pluto here it would obviously have its own orbit around the sun and it would obviously start uh moving a little bit faster because it, it needs to have faster velocity uh, or faster orbital speed for it to actually maintain constant orbit so here pluto is not in any kind of a balanced orbit uh, between earth and the sun however if i were to place it approximately 1.5 uh, million kilometers away from the Earth, it would be inside the Lagrange L1 point. Um, and right here, at this particular point, the actual uh, pull from both bodies would be relatively equal. Now, I think I kind of failed because it wasn't really at the right point. Let's try this again. Now, the thing is, in this particular game, currently... Um, the uh, Lagrange points are only marginally functional. Um, however, you, there is a test we can perform, and I'll do this in a second. And actually, the mistake I made was that I placed Pluto at a distance of about uh, 15 million kilometers, not 1.5. I, I had an extra zero in there that was very, very um, unfortunate and completely wrong. So it's, a, it's about here. So this right here is about 1.5 million or um, approximately a million miles away. So if I were to place this right here, let's see if this works. Technically, it's in orbit around Earth, but let's see if it actually stays in its Lagrange point. And kind of, look at that. It is actually staying in the Lagrange point. It's not orbiting Earth, it is an L1 point. See how it's actually in the same sort of orbit? Now, the thing is, this is a not very stable uh, position. Only some of the Lagrange points are actually stable, but this um, particular point, it needs um, constant readjustment due to, obviously, microgravity effects from other bodies. Now, now I've lost my Pluto, it's actually going to fly away, but it was an L1 point for a little bit. So let's actually just try this again, and I'll, I'm going to try to explain to you how to actually calculate L1 point by yourself. So there's actually a formula that you can derive uh, from this long equation you see on the screen right now, but it's actually already been um, done for you, and this is actually how you find um, the uh, distance from the smaller object, and in this case, Earth. So basically, you take the large uh, radius, which is the distance from the Sun to this object. I'm just trying to very slowly pace my way. There we go, almost 1.5. Here we go, so close. All right, this is good enough. So let's try this again. So Pluto is now in the L1 point, so we can actually come to Pluto and look at Earth and the Moon 
from the L1 point, which is a very stable sort of a balanced orbital point uh, away from Earth. And this is where these satellites are located. And uh, for this formula, M, um, M2 and M1 are the masses. And here, um, M1 is the mass of the large uh, object. In, in this case, it's the sun and M2 is the mass of Earth. And the interesting thing about this point is that there's actually uh, an orbit here as well. And so if I if I were to take, let's just actually decelerate this for a few seconds. Uh, if I were to take another object, let's take uh, Halley's Comet, I could actually place this in an orbit around this point. And this uh, particular um, orbital path actually has a name and many of the satellites stay in this orbit. So around this imaginary point. And this uh, point is called Lisa Ju orbit, and this is actually a French word, uh, and it's a name of a French person who discovered these orbits. Uh, and so basically, there is, I'm gonna just see if I can enable orbits just to show you, there it is. So there is actually or orbit around this particular imaginary point, where obviously there's no Pluto here, it's just a point in space. And uh, this L1 point will have these imaginary orbits where you can place satellites and they'll stay there for a very long time. As a matter of fact, one of the satellites that was launched in the uh, 70s called International uh, Cometary Explorer, also known as ISEE-3, uh, was in, in this orbit for a very long time and um, it actually was a really cool satellite because it was the first satellite to pass through um, a comet's tail back in 1985 uh, when I was I was actually very very young back then so I don't obviously remember any of this stuff uh, but uh, it did pass through a comet's tail and this satellite um, was uh, officially crowdfunded and rebooted uh, and the communication of that satellite was actually re-established uh, in 2014 in May of 2014 and uh, the group uh, that rebooted the satellite even uh, I think it was called actually Skycore company um, and they basically try to see if they can re-establish this particular orbit and even make the satellite work again and I think it, it was partially successful but it didn't have enough fuel to stay in a constant uh, Lisa Ju orbit and so it had actually ended up just basically escaping and is now in a heliocentric orbit around the sun instead but nevertheless, the idea here is actually pretty cool. So here, right here, and I'm going to erase Pluto just, just so you can uh, get the better idea. Uh, right here, there is this point, imaginary point in space between the sun and the earth. And this point has a, a sort of like a balance between two gravitational fields where if you were to place an actual um, object or a satellite in this case, it would then start orbiting around this point. And uh, th this technically can uh, can um, be indefinite. You can actually orbit forever, but in reality, because of the pull of other planets and other things in, in space, uh, normally you have to use a little bit of fuel to try to um, re-establish this orbit once in a while. And so most of the satellites, and specifically the five and soon to be six satellites that are in this L1 point orbiting in um, in this area uh, around the L1 point. All of them actually bring extra fuel so they can actually use that fuel to basically try to re-establish this Lisa Ju orbit. And I think it's a pretty cool concept and we're actually going to try to explore it a little bit later in another video that I'll make soon. Um, and, but I, like I mentioned before, there's actually more um, Lagrange points in space. There's L2 point behind Earth. There's also L... Um, L3 point on the other side of the orbit and then there's L4 and L5 points here uh, which uh, all of which uh, have very different sort of specifications and we'll talk about them separately later on. But uh, in Universe Sandbox 2, there is actually something called Lagrange Exploration, I believe, or Lagrange Point Exploration, Lagrange Test, that's it. So if you go here, it will give you a better idea of how this all works. So it's actually um, a Lagrange Point uh, or L1 point between the Moon and the Earth. And here, what the developers did, they actually placed two imaginary space stations. And these space stations... Uh, technically are in orbit around the moon, but they're actually in Lagrange point between Earth and the moon. And if you advance this, you'll notice that they'll actually stay in this point for quite a little bit until one of them actually kind of flies away. I think this one will be first, usually, after a few... Um, few hours or a few days I'm not I'm not sure how long it takes I remember I tried this a few times it doesn't always happen the same way uh, but right now they're in a relatively stable L1 Lagrange orbit or Lagrange point orbit between Earth and the Moon and this is a this is actually a very unique sort of a, a location in space because you can basically stay here 
and observe both bodies at the same time and you get to see uh, both bodies from sort of the same perspective. So this would be a really interesting um, location for a satellite in the future if you wanted to observe both the moon and the earth or maybe some, uh, you wanted to explore some sort of interaction of earth and the moon. But if I were to advance this a little bit more, uh, or at least if I were to accelerate time, eventually these two stations will stop being in the L1 point, mostly because of the mistakes in the simulation, but also because there's other gr uh, gravitational interactions here. And at some point they will both, there we go, uh, station out has flew has flown away and sta um, space station number one is going to lose its um, orbit pretty soon as well. I think it takes a few days for it to do that. Uh, but uh, this is a pretty stable orbit. And there we go. It's gone. And so um, th this is what uh, these Lagrange points are. They're a pretty interesting phenomena. It's um, explained all mathematically. There's really um, no other explanations for them. And uh, they were discovered uh, hundreds of years ago, but uh, technically we have not really proven them or have not used them um, until very recently. Specifically, most of the uh, L1 satellites actually arrived to that location within the last three years. Uh, so they weren't even that uh, actively used before until very recently. And now we actually use them for um, all kinds of solar observations and all con kinds of observations of Earth because it's a very good location to uh, look at Earth from because you'll basically get to see the entire Earth uh, from a, sort of the same perspective all the time and you can basically take these photos or um, take these observational uh, data readings and then send them back to Earth because uh, even though it's not really that far away, it's far away enough for, for us to actually have an unobscured view of our beautiful planet. And so that's uh, the idea behind uh, Lagrange Point and behind the satellites that are in that particular area called Lisa Ju orbit and hopefully you now know a little bit more about space and universe and orbital mechanics. Thank you so much for watching and if you did enjoy this video don't forget to like it and don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. If you did enjoy this video do share it with your friends because maybe they'll like to learn more about orbital mechanics as well. And in the next video we're going to explore a little bit more of space, a little bit more of science and a little bit more of math. Thank you so much for watching, game you later and bye bye.